I, I don't think I've ever actually told anyone that story. Hi everyone, Claire Rogers here. I'm at the PNC Championship and I'm very excited because Nellie Corda is joining me on The Scoop today. Nelly, thank you so much for joining me. Welcome to The Scoop. Thank you. So we went with cookie dough, but yes. this was not your first request. Yeah. What was? <laughs> My first request was rum raisin, which may not be a very popular choice, but hits the spot for it's me. It's your number one? Yeah. When I see rum raisin, in a ice cream shop, that's usually my go-to. Both of your parents played professional tennis. Your mm -hmm. little brother is a professional tennis player. How did you end up a golfer? Honestly, my sister. It was like, I was that annoying little sister that needed to do everything big sister did. She started taking lessons around the age of seven, so I was around two years old, so I was hitting balls right beside her with my plastic clubs, and I think it was something also that we could do all as a family, so my dad took it up too when he uh, stopped playing tennis, and then my brother was the odd man out. He was the one bouncing balls on concrete and hitting hit them in the air, so golf was a little boring for him, but I think he's gotten to appreciate it more now. Can you tell me not your first pro event you ever won, but the first tournament that you, probably as a ju young junior golfer, I'm guessing, ever won. Yeah. Kind of an embarrassing story. I was at my, like, uh, parents, friends place the night before, and I was, gosh, I think around nine years old in Prague, Czech Republic, and it was just like a nine hole, so it was a nine hole golf course, but we played the nine two times to, for it to be 18 holes. And I was in an older division and I don't know what I was eating the day before. I think they were like, she had a peach tree out back. So I was just downing peaches because they were so good. It was just like a beautiful summer's day. And I was just picking the peaches off of the tree. And then the day of the tournament, I was so nervous. I started puking up all the peaches. No. Yeah, just straight peaches, yeah. I had a bucket on the range and I was just puking into the bucket before my first tee shot. I was so nervous. Oh my God. And did you stop when you were, when you, when, once you teed off or were you sick? Yeah, I stopped. Round? I ended up winning though too. <laughs> Actually, I'm pretty sure I won like a bottle of champagne at nine years old and I gave it to my parents. Do you eat peaches still or no? Or are you yeah, yeah. Them? I okay. still do. Yeah. That's good. But. Definitely. I, I don't think I've ever actually told anyone that story, but oh yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay, so you're on the road a lot, obviously. Yeah. You see on social media, you have like certain, I mean, friends with a lot of the girls, but certain ones that you mm -hmm. might be closer with. Who are you closest with and what do you guys do together? Do you have mm -hmm. a favorite memory? Yeah, we. I obviously, you know, Jess is out on tour, was out on tour before she got pregnant. How rude, I know. <laughs> um, and I hang out with usually the same girls. Uh, Megan King, Allison Lee, Jess, we all kind of, we've been close for the past couple of years. We've all played junior golf together and we've just grown closer as time went on. And typically it's the coffee shops, local coffee shops, some really good uh, Korean food or any type of um, sushi place that we hit up. And that's pretty much all we do. We either get coffee or we eat. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> and we hang out. Some, some weeks we share a house and then some weeks we don't, but usually those those are the two things. It's definitely, I would say, the common denominator is always coffee. I mean, if we don't get dinner that week, it's, we always definitely get coffee. What's your order? Uh, a flat white, whole milk though. Oh, whole milk. I don't do any of that oat milk stuff. Okay, good to yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> How do you think they would describe you? <laughs> That's a great question. I, I don't know, I think, Megan has always joked because she's very extroverted and I'm a little introverted. Some people may say that I'm intimidating. It's just I'm very shy and introverted. And she's like, don't worry, when Jess, uh, when Jess is gone and like has her babies, I'll make friends for us. <laughs> and I was like, thanks, Meg. <laughs> That's your job, I know. Um, so I, would, I, would, I think that I'm definitely more on the introverted side, but with my friends, I'm comfortable and I am definitely a little extroverted in our group. But um, yeah, I would say compared to maybe others, I'm, uh, I'm definitely on the introverted side. 
So you're Caddy, Jason. Mm -hmm. How did you guys end up together and why do you think that you, the both of you work well together? So my rookie year, it was like my second to last event. I was kind of looking for a caddy for the next year on tour and my sister, uh, his old caddy Kyle number one she had a Kyle number two but Kyle number <laughs> one was really good friends with Jason and he kind of knew that um, I was looking for a caddy starting my second year on tour and um, I guess you know they kind of talked him into it best decision he's ever made totally <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, I, I, it's been an amazing ride with him I mean, seriously where we just finished our sixth year together and we're starting our seventh year and uh, I have all my professional, win or not one, one on Epson tour, but um, I ha pretty have much have all my professional wins with him, and uh, he's my best bud out there. So it's just a good dynamic. Yeah, yeah he's, it's like kind of yin and yang. He's such a positive person where it's like, sometimes I'm like, gosh, you're so positive, I want to punch you. <laughs> like, like duh. I was like, be on my level right now. Because yeah. I mean, as golfers, I mean, no one's ever positive all the time i mean you have doubts creep into your mind and then you also have just you just have negative thoughts out there sometimes you just have to be a little bit of a debbie downer yeah. <laughs> it's not all sunshine and rainbows all the time and he's always sunshine and rainbows and i was like dude match my energy yeah that's like something that i tell him all the time i'm like match my energy right now take it down enough. <laughs> yeah but he's so good like he's so good at that and honestly like i, I couldn't imagine my uh any playing any tournament without him. He was on like paternity leave for a little bit this year because him and Caro welcomed a beautiful baby. Um, and uh, he didn't caddy for me for like three events and I was so distraught from it. I was like, oh my gosh, I appreciate you so much more now. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, obviously the biggest perk probably of playing on the LPGA is getting to like fulfill your dreams mm -hmm. of playing professional golf. But besides that, maybe it's something that we wouldn't expect. What's the best part of playing on the LPGA Tour and then maybe the biggest challenge? I'm gonna start off with the bad and then I'll end with the good. Love that. I would say the, I think the bad is just like not being with your family all the time, being on the road, living out of a suitcase. Uh, but there's also a positivity to that because I get to experience so many different cool cultures, meet so many cool people. Um, hopefully, you know, inspire the next generation. And I would say the best thing is probably seeing all the little kids out there and uh, seeing how excited they are to watch us play. And hopefully, you know, that makes them want to pick the club up. Because at the end of the day, I, I do, I don't ever like obviously playing golf and it being my job is just a plus, but I just, I love playing it because I just love the game and I love competing. Um, and I think it being a job for me is obviously just a plus, but then inspiring the next generation and seeing how happy the kids are to be out at these events um, is very wholesome. So you teed it up alongside Tony Finau. Mm -hmm. Loved the shoes, by the way. Yeah, the, you the guys mirrors. Were matching. Did you yeah. guys, did they give you those outfits and then you figured out once you got there or was there talks before? No, <laughs> actually really funny. He showed up the first day and he was in like, the blue and black jays mm -hmm. and i was like and i was wearing the mirrors i was like dude we're supposed to match like, <laughs> what are you doing and he's like no, okay he was like i'm sorry tomorrow i'll wear them <laughs> so from the second day on we were matching but as in outfits no we didn't we just we didn't coordinate okay those. we were, we just wanted to the match shoes. the That's matching jays yeah. yeah the mirror jays yeah so looking back on that week with tony is there like a part of that specifically that you'll always remember with him? I think, honestly, I didn't really know him too well before that. Like we kind of hung out at the Masters this year um, at our agency's house. Um, and I got to meet his wife, all of his kids. And um, I'm pretty sure like his dad and a couple of his cousins. So the whole fam bam came and we hung out, watched them bowl. There was a bowling alley in the house, oh my which gosh. was pretty cool, yeah. Um, and then, unfortunately, I was very sad when I found out that his family wasn't going to be there that week, um, the whole Finau crew. But, you know, I was certified fresh, yeah. Finau fresh. I mean, I think that was 
that was the tip of the ice. <laughs> that was a cherry on top of the week. But I was just impressed with his whole demeanor. Uh, he's such a positive person and it's so fun to be around him. And he's very, very genuine. And his work ethic is um, really, really impressive as well. So if you could relive one moment or maybe it's 10 minutes, but a specific part of your career so far, what would that minute or moment be and why? I would say winning in front of my parents for the first time, Lake Nona, and I think it was 2021 in like January, but um, the most proud I've ever been was watching my sister, obviously her rookie year in 2011 wasn't the easiest, and then seeing her go to Australia for a month, playing on like the Australian tour, a couple events and getting into the uh, Women's Australian Open and winning in a six way playoff. I think that to me was like, has been by far like the best memory or watching my brother win the Junior Australian Open or even just any, or the, uh, the one ATP event that he's won, which I know that there's gonna be many more in the future, but see, there's nothing like seeing them succeed yeah. too. That's awesome. So every year, TaylorMade has that big shoot. Oh, yeah. And you're now on the squad. Yep. How did that go? <laughs> <laughs> it was, I didn't really know what to expect because I know every year is a different theme. Um, but it was so much fun. I mean, gosh, I mean, it was, I was at a table with Scotty and Tommy. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was just, it was just so much fun. I mean, you see, the videos and you see the behind the scenes on social media, but being to be being able to be part of that was actually really fun. The outfits were top notch. Like they were such a chef's kiss. Really? Yes. <laughs> Have you had you already met all the players who were there, or was it your first time meeting anybody? It was my first time meeting. So, so I met Tommy. I love Tommy. Fleetwood. Okay. Like I love his game, and I just I just really like Tommy, and I met him at the Olympics. I was too shy to ask for a photo and Mel Reed went up to Tommy and um, told him that I really wanted to take a photo with him. So I actually have a, I, I got a photo with him at the Olympics and then Scotty was the only one that I didn't meet to okay. the shoot. I met Colin at a couple of other shoots and got to meet Tiger and obviously Rory and the girls I play with on a regular basis. So awesome. the only one was Scotty. Okay. Cool. Good impression. He's super nice. I know <laughs> yeah. everyone is, everyone always said how nice he was. And I, my sister was like, so is he as nice as everyone says? And I'm like, he's, he's extremely nice. He's as nice as everyone says. Good. Yes. <laughs> and then finally, how do you celebrate a win? Gosh, I, it's tough. Um, a lot of the wins I've actually jumped on a plane right after and gone home. Um, there's, there's just like a weird rush of emotions that you have when you're on like the last nine holes coming down the stretch that when you don't have those emotions, you, you're on, you have like such a weird low, like you feel sick. Like it's, it's so weird. Like you're not hungry. Like you just kind of like, you're not even sleepy, but you're tired and you just, you feel so weird because like the adrenaline has just left your right. body and you're just stuck with like this weird, like sense of like emptiness in a sense, because you were just feeling for the past like two, three hours, like this massive rush of emotions, adrenaline. And um, I would say the one way I um, celebrate a win is I get into bed. <laughs> I just turn off my phone and just try to replay the day. Will you get a good night's sleep after a win or no? No, usually it's really bad. Yeah. Yeah. It's like I wake up and I'm like, whoa, I feel like I've been hit by a yeah. car. <laughs> like it's, uh, it's like a, such a strange feeling. Yeah, I yeah. bet. But it's like the most amazing feeling right. as well, yeah. Right, right, awesome. It's just the come down of the, the rush is very strange. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Thank this you for having great. me. Enjoy, it's a little melted now, yeah, but it's, it's good. Like, <laughs> it's ice cream soup, but yeah. it's good, yeah. I can fish out the uh, cookie <laughs> yeah, dough real well right now. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I've done. Mm -hmm.